The year is 2018. The Carolina Panthers are coming off an 11-5 season where they went to the NFL playoffs, losing to division rival New Orleans Saints in the wild card. However, this was a great step up, as Cam Newton looked like himself again after a mediocre 2016-2017 campaign, and rookie Christian McCaffrey showed flashes of greatness as he looked to take over running back one duties the next season. The Panthers were one of the most fun teams in the league. Jerry Richardson, the man who founded the Panthers, was unfortunately in a little bit of a scandal that involved sexual harassment and racism. Richardson eventually was forced to sell, and there were many potential owners interested in buying the team. One group including J. Cole and Stephen Curry. However, none of these were real serious until May the 15th, 2018, when billionaire David Tepper bought the team for $2.2 billion. The deal was finalized on July of 2018, and Tepper made it clear in his introductory press conference that mediocrity would not be tolerated. And he also made it sure that the culture that the Panthers had built since the team's inception in 1995 would remain. But winning was the only option in Carolina, and he had a great foundation to work with. One of the most fun quarterbacks in the league, a lockdown defense, a coach that seemed to know what he was doing, and a fan base that was extremely, and I mean extremely, passionate. 2018 was supposed to be another great year of growth for the Carolina Panthers, as they were expected to win at least 10 games and make the playoffs. It was a big prove-it year for Cam Newton, however. It was his time to prove that he was back to normal, and that 2017 wasn't just a fluke. David Tepper was excited to make the Panthers one of the premier teams in the NFL, and at the start of the year, it was great, starting out with a 16-8 victory against America's team, the Dallas Cowboys, and the David Tepper era had arrived in Charlotte. And by week 10, the Carolina Panthers sat at the top of the NFC South with a record of 6-2. This team was absolutely rolling, and nobody could stop them. Cam Newton was playing at an MVP level. The discussion going on was whether Cam Newton was going to win his second MVP or not. This team had everything. Grit, compassion, talent, and they wanted to win games. However, it was week 10 where everything fell apart against the Pittsburgh Steelers, a team that Tepper was actually a minority owner for before buying the Panthers. And this game was on Thursday Night Football, which first off, head coach Ron Rivera has always struggled with. This game was absolutely terrible and I hate to talk about it. A 52-21 Panther loss where TJ Watt absolutely destroyed, and I mean destroyed, Cam Newton's shoulder, and Newton was never quite the same after that. Make a long story short, the Panthers lost out except a final week victory against the New Orleans Saints, and during this time period, the Panthers ran three different quarterbacks, including a beat-up Cam Newton, Taylor Heineke for a game, and then the rest of the year, they went with Kyle Allen. And the Panthers finished with a record of 7-9, which was pretty disappointing considering the 6-2 start. However, I'm not going to put this one on Tepper. Injuries really suck, and they ruin great seasons. And I fully believe without Cam going down with a shoulder injury, the Panthers are competing for the NFC. I really do. This team was special, and it got ruined by injuries. The 2018 offseason, however, was kind of questionable. I will agree that Thomas Davis had slowed down, his production was not as great, and he missed the first four games with the suspension. But absolutely letting him walk without even offering him a cheap deal is a huge hit to your locker room. He is the definition of the Carolina Panthers. He he is a winner, he is a leader, and it's not a good look, but the Panthers still looked okay because they had struck gold in the draft with the selection of Florida State's Brian Burns, and if Cam Newton returned to form, this team would be absolutely fine. Sadly, Newton really didn't get better, and this team was disaster on crack, finishing 5-11. Newton got hurt again in a game against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, this time with a Lisbranic foot injury, and that would put him out for the rest of the year. Kyle Allen had to start the majority of the year. There was a time where the Panthers actually sat with a record of 4-2, but they quickly fell apart facing real competition. Ron Rivera ended up getting fired almost at the end of the season. However, Tepper had to throw an interim in there for the final four games of the year. The only real positive from this season was running back Christian McCaffrey as he went off, rushing for 1,300 yards, scoring 15 touchdowns, and establishing himself as one of, if not the best, running back in football. The problem was he was wasting his prime here on an awful team. The coaching search following Ron Rivera's firing took about a month, as on January the 8th, 2020, Baylor's Matt Rule would come in to be the team's new head coach, with LSU's Joe Brady becoming the new offensive coordinator. However, it was just six days later, Luke Keekley announced something that would break the hearts of millions of Panthers fans. He would be retiring way too young, scared that he would not be able to do life after football if he continued to get concussions. However, knowing then what we know now, I believe that Keekley did not gel well with Coach Rule's system and 
David Tepper, and he did not want to tarnish his legacy. The changes continued under Coach Rule as the Panthers let Greg Olson leave to go to Seattle. Again, like Davis, his production had gone down, but Olson was a great leader, and it was hard for fans to swallow. Many blamed David Tepper for letting Carolina greats just walk out, but that chatter settled down. Well, until March the 24th, 2020, when the Panthers released the star of their franchise for the past decade, Cam Newton. Newton was released due to his injury concerns and his production going down. However, this came after rules set a few weeks prior, he was excited to work with Newton and his abilities. The fans felt lied to and betrayed, but now that didn't matter. The team needed a quarterback and they needed one fast because Kyle Allen was not the answer. So the Panthers signed Saints backup Teddy Bridgewater to a three-year deal worth $63 million. Bridgewater had shown flashes in New Orleans and Rule loved the idea of the poor man's Cam Newton, I guess. Sorry, I had to. Once again, the Panthers struck gold in the draft, drafting Auburn's Derrick Brown, who would become a force in the league a few years later. The biggest problem with Matt Rule's signings is he wanted guys he was familiar with, including Robbie, now chosen Anderson, I think? I don't know. This guy was absolutely mentally insane then, and he's mentally insane now. I don't even know the guy's name because he keeps changing it, but he played at Temple where Rule used to coach, so therefore he was signed, as well as XFL star uh, PJ Walker. The 2020 Panthers were absolutely terrible, finishing with a record of 5-11 and once again, and it was after this that GM Marty Herney had to go. And in 2021, Tepper hired his man to be the GM, former Seahawks assistant general manager Scott Fittera. I'm going to save us a little bit of time here and not go through every little thing that Scott Fitter has done. Just know he's a terrible GM, but Tepper keeps him around because he's Tepper's yes man and he does whatever Tepper says. Tepper is a big believer in being involved in his football team. He's kind of like, I'm the owner, I will do as much as I want, and he does quite a bit. And there's quite a bit of questions on whether that works or not. Well, let's just go back to Fitter. The first thing he does is, well, he sees that Teddy Bridgewater, it didn't work, the experiment was terrible, so he trades him for a six to the Denver Broncos, meaning we had to pay about $33 million of Bridgewater's remaining salary. So, not exactly cost efficient, but maybe he can draft right. Well, not really. As you can see, here are the only guys that are solid under the Fittera era. Well, who's going to start for quarterback in 2021? Was it going to be XFL star PJ Walker? No. Actually, the Panthers tried something. They risked trading a sixth round and fourth round pick for former top five selection Sam Darnold. I give the Panthers somewhat credit for this. They took a risk, and at the start, it looked like it was going to work. The Panthers started 3-0, and Darnold looked absolutely awesome. He was distributing the ball extremely well, he was a true leader, and he looked great until about week four when reality struck that really we just played sucky teams. We lost four straight, and after that, losing a game to the Patriots to go four and five, Sam Darnold went down with a shoulder injury causing him to go on the IR. It was here where Tepper made a business decision to put butts in seats, signing Panthers star Cam Newton to a one-year deal. Newton had been cut from the Patriots at the beginning of this season due to them wanting to start rookie Mac Jones. Tepper and Rule don't exactly have the best relationship with Newton after lying to him, but because Cam loves the city of Charlotte and the Panthers so much, he agreed to show out for his former team. But let's just say, other than that first game, it didn't go very well. It put butts in seats all right, but unfortunately the Panthers finished the year 5-12, losing seven in a row. Newton, Darnold, and Walker all had chances at QB1, and they all were equally as bad. Basically, Newton was let go after the season's end, and he basically pushed into retirement, and the team chose to keep Walker and Darnold. The question with David Tepper was, when was he going to have a winning season, as every year seemed to be getting worse and worse. And Matt Rule looked absolutely awful, making excuses every week, clearly not being a fan of Cam Newton at all, and saying the famous, it took Jay-Z seven years to hit it big or whatever. There were many fans angry at Tepper and Rule, as they felt like Matt Rule was basically destroying the team. The question remained. When were the Panthers going to find a star quarterback? David Tepper was scrounging around before finally telling Scott Fitterer to draft Ole Miss's Matt Corral in the third round over North Carolina quarterback Sam Howe, who right now looks like a future star for the Washington Commanders. And then to make the QB room even more hectic, Tepper, Rule, and Fitterer decided to trade for an unhappy Baker Mayfield who was fed up with the Cleveland Browns. But let me save us some more time. That experiment sucked. Baker ended up getting cut, the Panthers started the year 1-4, Baker looked horrible, and finally, Tepper did what the fans wanted. He fired Matt Rule. It was this decision that actually won him some favor with fans. Fans got even happier when he named Steve Wilkes the interim head coach. And all things considered, considering we kind of like traded Christian McCaffrey and had a horrible roster, Wilkes did great. 
He went 6-6, six and six, and the Panthers finished with a record of 7-10, and 10, just a game from winning the NFC South. But more importantly, Charlotte FC played its inaugural season, owned by, you guessed it, David Tepper. Yay, that's what we care about. But nah, for real, back to football. It was clear, the Panthers were not going to get better until a true QB1 was brought in. Sam Darnold was not the answer, PJ Walker was not the answer, and Matt Corral was not the answer. And now, we get to talk about some more recent and familiar topics that, first, Tepper had a decision to make. Was he going to appease the fans, keeping Charlotte native Steve Wilkes as head coach, or hiring an outside guy? Well, in January, that decision was made, as the Panthers hired Frank Reich, devastating those who wanted Wilkes. But it did make it a little better that Frank Reich was the team's first quarterback. Well, this kind of started the sell the team Tepper group. I mean, it was kind of this time where people were like, well, just sell the team. But many gave Reich a chance. And we all know the story from March. The Panthers traded their ninth overall pick, a first round pick for the year after, plus DJ Moore and other picks for the first pick. And after much debate, they selected Alabama's Bryce Young. And after completely manipulating fans, we actually thought this team was good. Well, here we are in the present day. The Panthers sit with a record of an abysmal 1-10, in and Bryce Young has not been allowed to really do what he's been able to do in college because his O-line is absolutely disastrous. Frank Reich has been fired, Brian Birds won't get paid, JC Horn looks like an injury machine, but hey, all David Tepper has to say is, I brought concerts and soccer to Charlotte, and we may get better, we may not. whoop de freaking do buddy. We don't really care about either of those things. We do not care that you brought concerts or soccer. We want good football, good American football. That is what we want. We want a team to be proud of. Today, going to a Panthers game feels like going to an away game. There are always more fans of the opposing team than our own, and it's a shame and a mockery of Mr. Richardson. Going to a Panthers game is expensive today, and nobody wants to pay $200 plus to sit in good seats to watch their team get waxed. The Panthers are in trouble. No first round pick, a controlling owner, and no real future. The Panthers have gone through six different head coaches if you count interims, and they have had six losing seasons. That is a problem, and it's completely unacceptable. And there has been one common denominator, and that is Mr. Tepper. He has ruined the culture and fight in this team, and it's a shame because we were building something special. But hey, at least we can watch Beyonce in Bank of America Stadium, right? Well, not for long, because Bank of America is cutting its sponsorship with the Panther Stadium. Thanks, Tepper. Appreciate you, pal. Nah, but for real, this is make or break time. David Tepper is killing the culture we have. We have to fight to get it back. Tepper is trashing us, saying we need to stop tweeting about him. We're not stopping. You love us more. We have been loyal to you, and this payment we get, garbage football from a garbage owner, is unacceptable. David Tepper, you suck.